<laughs> All right, let me dive in like I'm getting to the wet water of the pool. <laughs> like, there's only one type of water, wet water, I'm sorry. 99.99% of the time, I think I'm thinking about money. See, I'm thinking that I'm thinking about money. And it's not the way that people would think. I'm not thinking about money because I love money because I don't. I appreciate it. I love what it can do for me. But I think about money because I want to be free. I want to do what I want to do. I want to go where I want to go. And I don't want to be messed with. So money stays on my mind because I know that that way too. Freedom to be free. Freedom. Braveheart voice is uh, money. So I've always thinking about how can I get my money to work for me? And it's not that I don't want to work because I enjoy working out. I enjoy doing stuff that brings me pleasure. However, is there a way that I could have my money make more money for me? Not really make money, but accrue in value without me having to do a lot of intensive labor or create a project and I'm not diminishing or saying that you shouldn't do those things. And the best way for your money to work for you is through some type of investment. And for me, until the system changes, until our capitalist system is reformed and recalibrated to be a different place than what it is, I will always say that the stock market, investing in other people's companies is the best way for your money to grow. Um, if you can find a company that nobody's heard of yet, something that will change somebody's life, <laughs> like 3D printing or some type of biotechnology <laughs> or some type of efficient means of travel, be it uh, electric vehicles or space travel, um, you can most likely make your one dollar turn into two, especially if you get at the right time. So you could buy a dollar stock and the next day it could be eight dollars. So in one day doing absolutely no labor, just risking that dollar. You can make $8. Now, a lot of people probably see the stock market as a casino. And some people can do it. I mean, it can be lucky. You can be like that. However, what makes it different than the casino is that you can actually evaluate companies. You can project out what a company's future is going to look like. And you can see the profit potential of a company and put your money into that. Listen to me, people. I don't know what you think. They got a lot of Air Jordans coming out this month. I'm just being honest. So do you think Nike is going to go up in value overall or down in value overall? People are going to get hungry. They're going to get hungry. You're going to eat something. And there's going to be some new restaurant, no matter in the pandemic or whatever happens, there's going to be some place that you want to go chew on. And they may come up with a new burger or a new burrito or a new <laughs> whatever type of food you eat, a new plant, something. And if you believe in it, do you think the company's going to go up? Or down so that's how you should be looking at stocks now we can go all into the other quote unquote options you can play the other derivatives the other things but if you keep it simple if you keep it simple you know that most likely they're going to come out with a new iphone this year they're going to come out with a new pixel this year they're going to come out with um, some new type of burger from mcdonald's you know something different is going to happen that's going to make people say hmm or they're going to have black friday online on Amazon or Black Friday on Target, you know that you want to get that Xbox 3, uh, whatever it is, Xbox, Xbox, the Xbox new one, <laughs> the Xbox 5000, <laughs> it's going to happen, the PS17, it's going to come out. So, you know that if you put your dollar in those companies, it's a chance, it's just a chance, that's, that's what the plane of lottery is, but it's a better chance in the stock market that your dollar is going to go up, you know, I'm telling you, I bet you, if you put a dollar into Google by the end of this year, your dollar would be at least three. You know, I'm just saying, and that's just <laughs> under valuing how much it could skyrocket up into the clouds. That's what I think. So when I think about money, I'm thinking about, can I put my money in a place that's going to accrue faster than just leaving it in a savings or checking account? Now, some people, you know, you're safe. You don't trust the, you don't trust the system. I don't want to put my money out there, but listen, if the stock market fall, I'm sorry to say, the whole system probably going to fall. So they're not going to let that happen. I'm not saying there's not going to be downtrends where you can lose 25% or even 50. But if you get in at the right time, let's say it goes down. As soon as it goes down, you look at the companies that's most likely to recover that you believe in, you put money into it. Sooner or later, some people are going to take you know, the vaccine and the, the pandemic will go slowly away. And then people will say, oh, I'm going to go travel. I haven't been somewhere in so long. And they'll get on American Airlines or Alaska Airlines. And they'll take their Uber to the airport and they'll hop on, um, you know, the, the Internet 
and find an Airbnb. You know, when they get there, they're going to use Lyft in whatever place they go to. You know, and these are all companies that you want to invest in. And then somebody's going to want to talk about it, so they're going to go to Yelp or Twitter and make reviews. So he's like, hmm, maybe I should put it in Twitter because people like to be heard. <laughs> like Charles, I want you to hear me, baby. I want you to hear what I'm saying. That's what's going on. So for people, I know we talk about financial literacy. We do. Or I do. And it's it's. I guess it's like a church. Either you believe or you don't believe. There's so much you should know. You gotta understand taxes. You gotta understand short term and long term capital gains. Um, you have to understand um, non taxable accounts, like, you know, the Roth IRAs and other ways you can save your money. And it seems like it's some puzzle. It's like it's really, really difficult. But truthfully, it is not that difficult. I think that the main thing for money. For money, it's patience. It, you know, it's more of a marathon than a hundred yard dash. You know, every day, every day you like, man, I hope I've made a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars in a day. But some days you may lose one dollar or two dollars or five dollars or ten thousand dollars in a day. But over the long term, it's much more likely over a 10 year period, you will, if not at the minimum, get your money to a 50 percent increase. You could double or triple it. So, to me, my advice for people is to try to invest your money in a company that you think is going to skyrocket. Um, you know, I, I like science fiction. I'm always thinking about the future. So, some of my favorite companies are Tesla, Virgin Galactic, Nano Dimensions. Anything that's going to speed up things or make it better, you know. Workhorse. <laughs> Solo. <laughs> And then, I, you know, I, I like that. I like Microsoft. I like Apple. I like Google. You know, I can say it to you. Hey, baby, do you Google? <laughs> do you Google? Well, I'm Pixel. We can Google and Pixel together and make a Google Pixel 6. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> so that's what I think about when it comes to uh, just companies making money, the future, and um, patience. Patience is something that I lack extremely. I'm working on it. I'm trying to be more of a better listener i'm trying to be more of a empathetic person because i'm not that I'm, i have empathy for lots of things but a lot of things i have no empathy for when it's like stupid when i ask somebody a question i have a friend of mine he always says this to me people are not going to answer the way that you want them to answer because they're humans they're free to do what they want to do and I, I get that but if i ask you did you eat my burger yes or no the the, the answer should be Yes, I did, or no, I didn't. I don't, well, maybe, I got to just answer the question. And some people find it so hard to answer. So I'm trying to have more empathy that people really don't listen to you. I'm trying to get it. Because if you ask me a question, I might not, let's say I didn't really hear you clearly. I will say, I didn't hear you. Could you please repeat? That's just me. Somebody will say, I'm sorry. And I'll be like, I understand why you're saying it. Because you hope that I understand that colloquially that term is used to say that I didn't hear you. Could you please repeat? But me being the dollars that I am, I'll be, uh, sorry for what? <laughs> did, you, did you pass gas or something? <laughs> Why are you telling me to be sorry? Sorry for what? Oh, I'm sorry that I didn't hear you. Then if you said that in a sentence, I'm sorry, I did not hear you. Could you please repeat? I would understand. But now you're hoping that I understand just because you said you're sorry. Uh, you know, uh, I, uh, irritates, uh, irritates the chuckster. But back to, to the money. I think about it a lot. That's where I'm thinking about even now. I'm thinking about, you know, um, Trying to sit some money on the sidelines. I'm always trying to put my money into play, but I'm more of a long-term guy, so I don't want to just put my money into something and take it out. I'm trying to evaluate companies that I like and say, mm, I like that. I think it's going to do good in two or three years, and I want to put my money there and park it. So if I know that sooner or later the market is going to dip, I want to catch it on the dip. So I'm trying to save some <laughs> a big amount so that when some, a company that I like dips, I can say, okay, I'm about to dive in with a couple thousand and get this. And um, you can't go up without taking some type of risk. You, you got to risk it. So I risk all type of stuff. I risk it. And number one, what I'm risking right now is patiently trying to save more money so I can do more things and separate myself from more people. And I love people, but I know that when you're around people, you're not always going to get the peace that you want. So I want more peace. I want more peace. So that's what I'm working on. That's probably why I think about money so much because money equals freedom and freedom is peace to me. Doing what I want to do, not being bothered by other people, just doing what the Chuck wants, you know, just, you know, I want to do me. Do you want to do you, baby? <laughs> so that's what I'm focusing on. That's what I'm fixing on. That's my aim. 
I love people. I love humanity. And I'm going to tell people, I don't know what you think. But before anything, I see myself as a person, as a human being, as a spiritual creature that loves everybody. And there's probably more to me than this. I don't know what you see. You probably see this American <laughs> or this funny looking guy or this black man or whatever, or this African American, whatever terms you guys want to use to equate my phenotype and what you see in me. And do you, you know, me, I focus on money and I focus on having fun and I have more fun than you. <laughs> and I'm done. Hopefully I made some type of sense. I just wanted to be silly and talk about money, money and freedom, money and freedom, money and freedom, freedom. <laughs> the name of this video will be Money is freedom, Braveheart style. <laughs>